Hey kids, welcome back to another episode of Todd's House of Speed. So you see what got in my hand like leaning on right here? It's our Money JD 430 diesel. And today what we're gonna be talking about is how to fix the sloppy steering on this thing. Um, if you look in my other videos, I kind of touch on some things, but we're gonna review it and talk specifically about it. Uh, I want to thank all of our viewers, uh, the people that contacted me and commented to address specifically the sloppy steering. And um, so I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and I'll show you one modification that's going to make a huge difference. Okay, so we're going to pull this thing inside because man, the sun is like hitting me big time and we're going to start on it. All right, let's go. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. So we got our money John Deere 430 inside the garage and we're gonna address the sloppy steering. But what we're gonna do first is we're not gonna focus on the actual steering. We're gonna start before that in the back of the machine. So the first thing I would tell you, you all is basically check for any hydraulic leaks because as you can see, as you all know, the 430 and then the 330 uh, diesel as far as I know, they're the only two. Uh, the steering is all fully hydraulic, I meaning there's, there's no mechanical connection to the steering head, uh, the steering control. And so the lifeblood is the hydraulic pump. So we're gonna start back there and I'm gonna show you where that is just in case you don't know for reference. And the biggest thing what we're looking for is before we start anything addressing this is make sure you do not have any hydraulic leaks. Even if you have some seepage or whatever it is, it's just like an athlete bleeding. Um, if it's seeping or leaking hydraulic fluid, anywhere in the machine, please fix it. Whatever it is, because it's not get, getting better, it's not gonna heal itself. And since the hydraulics are the lifeblood of this thing, and it uses specifically hydraulic steering completely, not assist, your hydraulic system has to be in good shape. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath here, I'll give you a perspective. We're just gonna check, there shouldn't be any leaks because I've serviced this recently. And uh, I wanna point out where the hydraulic pump is and just show you what that looks like. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, okay? Okay, so we're looking at underneath the tractor and uh, there's the input shaft or the shaft coming from the engine where there's the transaxle assembly. And if y'all can see right here, I don't know if I can point. Well, let's see here. Let me see if I can point. So here's your shaft, um, and it's going in, and you see that kind of, that little bit of that housing right there? Um, that's the input shaft uh, to the transaxle, and that housing inside that is your hydraulic pump. So it's a small gear set. So what this does is, that's where the magic happens, so to speak. That's the heart of the machine. So inside that cover um, is the pump, the, the two gears, and that's what provides the flow and the pressure for the machine to run. So it all starts right there, believe it or not. So just so you all know where it is. So we're looking pretty good underneath here. It's not, um, it's not perfectly clean, but uh, we're looking pretty good overall, okay? So that's your hydraulic pump right there for the entire machine. Okay, so we checked underneath the, the tractor and um, there's no leaks or seeping or anything. Showed you the, the pump, what that looks like. Here's kind of the bad news, guys. So if you've got leaks around that pump, there's a seal and a roller bearing. And um, it's, if you have leaks around the pump, um, uh, I think you can get the seal and the bearing, but I'm not sure you can get the pump parts anymore. Uh, matter of fact, I'm pretty certain. 
So if you're dealing with, if you don't have any leaks and everything is, appears okay, um, all these are old. I get, my point is all these are, well, this one's like 35 years old, give or take. And um, all of the pumps, they all wear the, the gears inside that housing and it also wears the house wears also the housing as well. And so there's nothing you can do about it to my knowledge. They don't make replacement gears. And so what can you do? And you'll find it like um, this, that's part of the reason the steering may be slow, part of the reason. And also if you're going up a hill and there's a load and the, the tractor, the engine is the same speed, but the tractor is kind of slowing down, um, it's just not producing the pressure. So if anybody out there knows of replacement pump gears, or housing, I don't think there are, but let me know. Because I checked John Deere, they don't make them anymore. Uh, Steiner makes some stuff, but um, anyway. So what do we do? All the machines are old and the pumps are worn. I mean, they are, I mean, that pump is the lifeblood of the machine. That's where it all starts right there. So I'll show you uh, kind of a tip, a workaround for that. So when you go into John Deere and you buy, you should be, well, let me back up. So you should be, in my opinion, servicing the hydraulic system, which means draining completely and putting new hydraulic fluid uh, every season. Um, these machines are old. You, you, can't, you can't over maintain something. And, and that every uh, one season might be, I don't know, a couple of hundred hours or whatever. Um, but there's nothing wrong with putting good, the, high, replacing the hydraulic fluid and a filter. It's just like the engine oil and filter, the same idea. So when you go to John Deere to get your fluid, pretty sure they're going to tell you, because they told me, they recommend high guard light. And uh, just like Bud Light, yeah, that's not any good. So what does that mean? So let's go down here. So it's high guard is what it's called. I think it's how they spell it. And they'll go, and it, it will say right on the gallon bottle, it'll say light. So what does that mean, high guard light? So what it means is the viscosity. So say it's the light would be, say, if you were comparing it to an oil, I don't know what it is specific, like an engine oil, like say a high guard light might be a five weight versus a 10. I don't know what it is specifically, I'm just picking a number. But just know, that the light is what John Deere calls for. The problem is, is when you're, these machines are old, and so what do you do if you can't, all the pumps are worn, and so what you're doing is there's extra clearance in the pump and you're losing some flow and some pressure. And there's really not a lot you can do about it, but there's one thing you can do. So when you change your fluid, and if you haven't done it, or if you have high guard light in it, drain it. And this is what you wanna do. just regular high guard. The regular high guard only is, I don't know how much thicker it is, it's not substantially thicker, but it be, I'm just guesstimating like, instead of a five weight for the light, it, this is maybe a 10 or 15 weight. So again, I'm guessing, but essentially it's a, it's a thicker viscosity. And so what that's gonna do is, is you get that high guard light, that thin stuff out, and you put the thicker, which is what it is, hydraulic fluid. It's the same fluid, just it's the viscosity. And basically the thicker fluid will take up the clearances some, I mean, say take up, make some difference. Uh, just like putting a thicker oil in your engine if you're trying to like band-aid it. So it is sort of a band-aid, uh, but it makes the machine perform better. Um, and, and I mean, noticeably better, like the hydraulics, the steering, I mean, you notice a difference. So that's my tip. First thing you do is, Start right there. If you don't have high guard, or maybe you have a machine you're not even sure, drain it, put a fresh filter on it, and use high guard. And I think these things take like a gallon and a half or something like that. And you're gonna cry when you go to John Deere because you, when you see the price. But anyway, um, that's the first step in fixing your steering. Okay, now next step, let's go back here. Just to make sure we're clear. And I'm gonna get the, get the camera here. Okay, so back here I'm pointing, and you can see that's your fill level, 
and this, uh, this one's just a little bit low. So in that range right there, in that window of that holder, not really a clamp, but that's designed so you can see it, basically your fluid level. So always make sure your fluid level uh, is with the engine running, okay, the system operating, and it should never be low. Um, the, it might look a little dirty, but it's more the plastic tube kind of yellows with age. Uh, I can assure you that fluid is, is awesome. All right. So that's the next step. Uh, make sure your fluid level with the engine running is where it should be. All right. All right, folks. So now we'll get to the meat and potatoes. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jack this up and what we're going to look at is we're going to look how much play is in the front axle. So we're starting from the back of the machine and working forward, not like a lot of people would think, is working with the linkage and the cylinder and all that. We're not doing that. We're going to get there, but we need to eliminate and make sure those things are addressed in order. Okay, the next thing is we're going to jack it up and we're going to check for play in the front end, specifically the I-beam axle. Okay, let's go. All right, so I've got a piece of oak right here uh, in my spare cribbing over there to, uh, that I use for projects just like this. I'm gonna put it down here. And on the quick attach, I'm gonna put it on the brackets because they'll support the weight. We're gonna jack it up. So all we're gonna do is just unload it, okay? So just make sure that Let's see here. There we go. Wheel spin. And then uh, we're going to use jack stands. All right, so we're going to let it down easy and make sure our wheels spin. Okay, so we've got it jacked up and we've got it safely supported uh, with our jack stands. Uh, I know this goes without saying, guys and gals, it's uh, when you jack something up, even if it's for a quick check, make sure you use jack stands or something, you know, wood cribbing, uh, whatever you use that's uh, safe because I'm telling you, jacks will roll over, they'll collapse. So I'm just gonna say that, all right? So what we're gonna look at is the front axle. So unless you guys and gals, whoever's out there watching, uh, basically the best way to check this axle for play and slop is you need to take the wheels off and disconnect the cylinder um, and take the steering linkage off. And the reason is you wanna be completely free and so you can take the axle right here and with that, twist the axle, I say twist, just see if you can do like this, like torsionally, see that? Or if you feel any play. Now again, all the linkage and everything is done. Now I did this, when I went in this machine, uh, that was one of the things that I did in the, I say the restoration, it was mostly um, cosmetic and it was a major service. I, I say that that's what this restoration was. I was very blessed that somebody actually took good care of it. Okay, I'm underneath the tractor in the front and there's your, what I'm looking at or we're looking at is the PTO drive pulley. This is the front PTO, kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at just back here. Kind of give you, uh, I'm not a very good camera person, but if you can see behind here, do you see that right there? Let me, let me pull back. There's actually a bushing um, in there in this piece. And I believe Steiner, I'm, I'm pointing right now, but basically through that bushing, if you look back here, your axle, let me see if I can, if y'all can see. So your axle pivots here. So here's your pivot point. And at last that I looked, Steiner sells 
This bushing, I am pretty sure, as a matter of fact, I'm absolutely sure, and I'm going to give you an illustration um, what that looks like in uh, the part number, okay? Number 18 group in this illustration. So what you're checking for is slop in your axle, okay, right there. Now, of course, everything is together. Now, I did this prior, as I said, and it was in good shape, okay? All right, so with everything disconnected, and we were just showing you the pivot bushing, when you're up in there, it, you're going to have a little bit of, like, just a little bit of side to side, and maybe like when you twist it, I'm talking about twist it like this. It's going to be just a little bit, but if you have excessive, and I'll leave you all to be that judge, you kind of, there has to be a little bit, um, but if you have, if it's excessive, excessive might be, you can feel it like clunk, clunk, I'm exaggerating, or you can go like this, okay, like this, and um, I'll leave it up to you guys and gals, but um, there should be almost none. It should be, or a very little clearance. So if you have a lot of clearance, stop and go ahead and pull your axle out. You'll have to pull the uh, front PTO. Um, it's kind of a job because it goes through the front axle, the shaft and everything. Uh, but you can get the replacement parts for it. And I'll show you the exploded view on, I think I, it's Steiner that I have. And also, I want to correct myself. I said it was a grease fitting. There is not. So sorry, folks. I uh, just want to make sure I got that right. So let's, let's say that yours is good. Or if it wasn't good, you've taken that apart and you've fixed it and put a new bushing in. Okay. So the next step is, okay, where do we go? So we're, we're working from the back of the machine, the pivot pin. And now we're going to talk about the rub blocks and the adjustment for that. So if you come down here, do you see this bolt and nut? There, this is a rub block, that's what I call it. Here's one here, and there's one here. And you can see, here's your front axle, and these are the wear, excuse me, the wear blocks or the rub blocks. And I, I, I know there's an adjustment there. Well, I think there's an adjustment in John Deere, I'm sure that they specify. I have mine about, 20 or 25 thousandths and I, literally with a feeler gauge you don't want a lot and basically what that does is the torsional part of the front end so the front end is pivoting but those bolts are like stops essentially is you want to take up all the slack but maybe 20 25 thousandths and you uh, you can watch it right here you can watch it go through i mean i've got the wheels on but you can see that basically there's not a lot so if you had too much, you would, this is your lock nut, you would adjust it, and it's just a bolt, but it's a, I'm sure it's a grade eight, and you would adjust it in this wear plate here, and I put a little bit of grease on here and a little bit here. And so what does that do? So it's there to take the torsional load like this. So as you're like running the machine and the wheels, you know, you've got your wheels are falling to the ground, your axle is pivoting, but it's taking the torsional load, so that's the forward and the backwards. So make sure, that's the next step, is you're adjusting that, and I'm going to call it 20 thousandths, give or take. I, I think I said 25. You don't want it tight at all, because that thing, and you don't want it to just be loose. You want about 20 thousandths, and that gives it enough as through the heat uh, and the, you know, ambient temperature, it gives it enough where it's stabilizing the front axle from doing this, okay? And without wearing. So you don't want it so tight it's dragging. So that's the next thing, okay? So we're gonna assume that at this point that your pivot is good, you've already made the adjustment here, and you put just a wisp, a little bit of, I say a wisp, like just almost by mistake, a little bit of axle grease, you know, some heavy grease just on these rub plates, and you've got that adjustment, and it's the same on both sides. You don't want to adjust it like this, okay? Does that make sense? All right. So I will tell you the next thing that uh, wears a lot on these. So here's the end of our axle, and then we have the spindle. It's all one piece. And then in the end of the axle here um, is essentially kind of like a kingpin, if you will. So in the top and the bottom... So in the here and here, there are brass bushings, and you can still buy those brass bushings. And, and I don't know about a lot of machines, if they got a lot of hours uh, where there's wear everywhere, but you definitely have to address all the things from the back forward to address the sloppy steering. 
What I found is the most common, really high wear, is these uh, brass bushings. And you can knock them out with a, a brass drift. And uh, they're a, a press fit, but not so bad you can't. They're designed basically an interference fit, a, a press fit. But if you had a wood block and were careful with it, you can drive them, the new ones, right in. Okay. So when I took mine apart, these were worn out. Okay. And uh, so the spindle, which is one piece here with the wheel, there was very little wear because basically a lot of times components will wear together. All right. So if this spindle has much wear, I mean, I don't know if it's really worn badly. I haven't checked to see if it's available, but you got to make that difference up because it all goes back to slack. You got to take all the slack out of everything as you go up. So eliminating excessive play. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember also on the wheels, I think I put a little bit thicker washer. I can't remember. As you can see, there's a little bit of slop here, a little bit, but you can only get these so tight. And I think I put a thicker washer. Anyway, I did that during the restoration. So that's the next thing to check. So if, you're, if you can slide the wheel like, I mean, there's a little bit here. But if you can, if there's like 30 or 40 thousand basically you can slide the wheel in and out, try a thicker washer on the end, one end or the other, because basically you want very little play. So I've got a little bit right there, but there's hardly any lateral play is what I'm talking about right there. So if you've got that and you've putting the wheel back on, we're working to the end, you know, from the back to the front is you want to eliminate, again, excessive play and just be creative with it. So you can get a, you know, try a thicker washer and see it takes up essentially the end play. All right. Now it, we're going to go all the way to, and we're going to knock right on down to the tie rod ends. Now, one tie rod end was good. These are sealed. You can't lube them. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure it was this one I replaced. Uh, these are still available from John Deere. I don't know how much they were, but it was, those were pretty reasonable. Okay. All right, so we're walking through and I'm going to show you. So when I first got this machine done, restored, um, and I went through all of this and the first time I went out and just kind of drove it, it, I'll tell you what it drove like, even with all that stuff fixed, it drove like a boat. So if any of you have ever driven or basically piloted a boat with a fixed prop, and I say not an outboard, like a fixed prop, like an inboard, and you turn the, the wheel and it's like you could count one, two, and then it starts turning. That's kind of what this is. Immediately, I said, man, I said, I did all that and it still, it steers better, more responsive, but I still had a ways to go. So the next step was, you see this is a replacement cylinder and I'll talk about it in a minute. So I had a fair amount of play in this clevis back here right here and i think this is a category zero um and i think the bolt is i don't know if it's five eighths i'm guessing anyway um, but there was a fair amount of play in the ball so what i did was since the original cylinder that i had on here um, was not leaking initially i went and got a I call it a clevis, however you want to call it, heim joint. I'm sorry, heim joint. So the heim joint, get, get my terminology here. So the heim joint had a lot of play in the ball. So I went and uh, I found a replacement, went to John Deere. I think it's category zero. I believe that's what it is, heim joint. And just with threaded and I cut it off and I measured it and I took the cylinder off, extended the rod to the end and then I cut it and then put the new heim joint on and that helped a lot but it still drove like a boat in the out in the ocean so um, with all the play uh, taken care of and a reasonably tight steering what's the next thing to do so i started looking at here okay i started looking at this top piece here and you can see um, this spindle is got a spline on it and here is uh, the bracket that essentially that the steering bolts to 
And I don't know if you can pick it up. You may not be able to pick it up. But basically, from hole to hole, and this is where the modification comes in. This is kind of the secret sauce. The modifications, uh, the, uh, this bracket initially was much longer eye to eye. And so what am I talking about? So with everything, um, basically starting from rearing the machine, again, repeating myself, but going forward, eliminating all the excessive play, I went and, like I say, drove this out in the yard, and it was just like, oh, I couldn't even believe it was like, it was so unresponsive. It was like driving a boat again. So I fixed that. It still drove. It was better. Like each thing was better, but it didn't suit me at all. Okay. So I'm going to explain to you basically simple leverage. And what I did, this is what I modified. Okay. As I just said. So this bracket here on top is connects the end of the cylinder to the top of the spindle. And this has been shortened. Well, I'll, I'll, since I've already done this modification, I'm going to use a set of calipers to kind of get you close to give you an idea just how close it is now. Okay? Give me a second. All right. And then what does that end up be? Looks like it's an inch 800. Okay? I don't know if y'all can see that. So pretty much center to center, and I'm pretty close, is an inch and 800. So since I've already done this modification, okay, and y'all didn't get to see it, but it's really simple, okay? And what I did was I put the distance as close as I could, the end of the cylinder, to the top of the spindle. So if y'all are tracking with me, the idea is I'm decreasing the pivot points. So essentially, with the same throw, I have more action. So let me illustrate that on the board, okay? All right, so I'm going to illustrate. Some of y'all probably know exactly what I did. So initially, that bracket, that arm we were just looking at, I don't remember what the distance was. I didn't really care. Um, but the idea is, this is our, my five-year-old kid drawing, okay, right here. But let's just say this one, this is how it looked originally, okay? And for all of you out there that haven't modified it, like whatever the measurement is, you can send me a... Uh, I mean, I'm not sure it matters because they're, they're all going to be the same. So it's not so much that we need to know where it is because it's the same bracket from, uh, and I, I think maybe the 330 uses the same bracket because it uses the same cylinder. Anyway, so here's the whole idea, okay? Our cylinder here, here's our power steering cylinder, and it's fixed back here. And then here's our rod coming out. So all that is fixed, meaning the angle of attack or the, the leverage. Uh, where it's going or the angle of where it's coming out. So we're fixed back here with a bolt and a bracket on the frame. So what I want to do is I want to make like a race car or the idea is where you want it responsive. You want it essentially the ratio quicker. Okay. And how are we going to do that? So we're going to say this is whatever distance this is. Okay. Doesn't matter. Just that's the original distance. That's a question mark. Well, it's supposed to be. Is I don't care what this is, but I do care is how close, if I move this here and move this as close to the pivot point, basically what I'm doing is for the same amount of stroke on the cylinder, I'm going to create more movement all the way around. Okay? Let me show you. So that's what we started with. So what I did was, oh, okay. So this is what I started with. So <clears throat> to make it as quick as possible, the ratio is what we're doing. We're increasing. Everything else is fixed. We've taken up all the play we can, working from the back to the front. So, and it still doesn't suit me. So we're going to take this and we're going to shorten this. So I cut it. I think about, I say roughly, um, it was just past here. It was just past the spindle, the splined, okay, right here. I cut it. And then what I did is I, would, I kept cutting it until literally the clevis, I had this bracket, and I don't know if it was an inch, whatever it was, it was substantial. I don't know, but three quarters of an inch, whatever. It may have been more of an inch for all I know. But um, I... 
the point is I wanted to get from the pivot point out here and get it as close as possible. And then as a matter of fact, I got it as close as possible. And then as I started turning it through the turn, okay, turning the wheel, I noticed that the heim joint here, the housing was actually, the end of the heim joint was rubbing, okay? It was rubbing the axle, okay? So this is the top of the axle. I don't know, that's not really supposed to go like this. But basically, as I was coming through the arc, it was hitting this. So I knew I was about as close as I could get. So I took the heim joint on the cylinder and I shaved or I ground it, uh, basically. So when I went full stroke, back and forth it wasn't binding on the axle housing yeah that's not a great it's i'm not sure that's, that's really not a great my five-year-old drawing so let me show you what i'm talking about so let's do this let's this is essentially what i did let's move this since i got this up here okay Okay, and essentially, <clears throat> I say essentially, so I put this, once I got the bracket, I cut it, I put it back on the spindle, and then I kept cutting it, sections out of it, basically measuring it until I got it as close to this as possible. So again, and some of you may still not, and that's okay, understand what's going on. But basically everything is fixed. So the only way you're gonna make the ratio any quicker is by shortening this distance here. So the cylinder moves X amount of inches. That doesn't change, you really can't change anything about that. But with the one thing you can change is the bracket here that attaches that to the top of the spindle. So we measured it and that's the modification. That's like the shocker, right? Um, and I came up with approximately 1.8. I don't think you can really get it any closer because I shaved the, the heim joint. And um, that's about as close as you can get it without being too close. Does that make sense? So it's just trial and error. So that's all I did, really. And I'm going to tell you, it made a huge improvement. It still kind of drives like a boat. I mean, kind of but it's nothing how they came out initially. And I'm not sure why the steering is so, the ratio is so slow. It's not like the thing weighs 10 tons. I don't know. Um, but <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that the cylinder uh, is, is, I'm pretty sure it's the same on the 330. And so you can do this to your 330 as well as if you, if you feel you have sloppy steering, okay? So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, may have been a little long-winded, but that's what you do from the rear of the, of the vehicle. You start all the way, and then the last stop is the steering and modifying that bracket, and that's how you do it. Make that bracket as close as possible to the two points to get the maximum with the same amount of stroke, and you get more turning because these distances are close together, okay? So that's the modification. The last thing I'm going to talk about is um, I said the old cylinder, so along the travels, the cylinder started, like a lot of them, started weeping out of the dust seal, which means um, the inner seal has started to essentially wear out. So <clears throat> uh, you can't get any parts for it that I know, and they probably do that for a reason. This thing is all manufactured, this cylinder, at least on these, I think are all done by machine, and basically the ends are cut, and they have their seals and everything that fits a certain, um, that's all like in-house essentially. There's no serviceable parts for these. That's, that's my point. I mean, none. So I figured, well, I could fix it. So this cylinder, I don't know what it is right now, but a couple of years ago, it was almost $700 at the dealer, believe it or not. But what are you gonna do if it's leaking? And it got to the point it was leaking so bad, I had to fix it. So I cut it open and all the seals that I could find some of the seals, but without a lathe or spending a lot of time basically on the inner seal for the um, rod here, I couldn't find a way to retain that. Now, if you had access to a lathe and had some time, you could do it anyway. 
I wasn't able to do it, and I was, you know, frankly, I use this machine all the time. So I went to John Deere and I bit the bullet. That's just what I did um, because I couldn't really find the serviceable parts for it. And I actually tried to, I, I went online and I found some seals that were close, but they didn't last long. So, you know, anyway, I did actually try to fix it. So just, just a heads up, if anybody's fixing it, knock yourself out, let me know. Um, but in the economy of time, sometimes you just got to spend the money. Um, anyway, so that's actually a new cylinder. And I asked the guy at John Deere, so here's, a, here's the thing, folks. If you deal with your local dealer, whatever it is, and you're pretty much always paying retail, I asked him, I was like, look, man, this thing's like $700. I said, could you give me a break? I shop here all the time. And I just asked politely. And he goes, you know what? Let me look. And they end up giving me 10% off, okay? It was 60 some dollars. So sometimes in those things, when you have to like spend the cash, whatever, and you've got a good relationship with your whoever it is, John Deere, Porsche, whatever, ask them, man, it's like really expensive. Could you give me a little bit off? You know, can you give me something off? They may or may, all they could say is no, but you at least ask. All right. So that's what happened there. Eventually, um, I had to put the buy a new cylinder and I uh, got it for 10% off uh, and all is right with the world ever since. So that's my video today, man. Thank you all so much. I hope this, um, I wasn't too long winded and kind of addressed the things that we needed to address. Please like and subscribe, man. The channel is growing. Uh, and and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm shocked how the, the JD stuff, uh, I don't have a lot of videos. I'm at under 30, I think, or not even 30, but the JD is the most popular and they're crazy. All right. So it just shows all the enthusiasts out there. Thank you all very much again. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See ya! Somebody's asleep. He's, he's night-night. Look at that. Yeah.